Most of the really simple homebrew receiver designs you see cover the AM broadcast band and maybe some of the lower frequency shortwave bands, maybe up to 7 or 10 megahertz. They don't often tune much higher, like 27 or 28 megahertz. Yet, with the improving HF conditions, a lot of things can be heard on those higher frequencies, so you need something to tune that range. Now, if you were to just get a regenerative receiver, you can tune up to 27, 28 megahertz with one of those. You need to make some modifications like a smaller inductor, maybe a smaller tuning capacitor, but often performance is disappointing. The receiver will drift more than on lower frequencies and tuning will be quite finicky, especially if you don't have a vernier reduction drive on your tuning capacitor. Also, issues like poor sensitivity might not be so noticeable on lower HF bands because you've normally got higher noise levels, but they become very apparent up on higher frequencies. And things like microphonics as well. Tap the top of the cabinet and you'll get quite a lot of frequency drift. Again, it gets worse as you go up in frequency. I think that's why a lot of the homebrew designs only cover the lower HF bands. It also gets more complicated if you need to add in more switching or plug-in coils. I've spoken about regenerative receivers. It's a similar deal with very simple direct conversion receivers. Again, normally you see them described for 3.5, 7 megahertz, but rarely up on higher frequencies. The easiest way to overcome that if you have an existing receiver that covers the lower HF frequencies is to add a small converter like this. This converter will just take the incoming signal at say 27 megahertz and depending on the crystal that you've got in the converter will convert it down to a lower frequency. In this case because I'm using a 24 megahertz crystal it goes down to 3 megahertz. So as long as my receiver can cover 3 megahertz then it can also receive 27 megahertz signals. And as the receiver goes higher than that, it, if it covers 3 to 6 megahertz, then you're also getting coverage of 27 to 30 megahertz. So that's both the 11 meter CB band and the 10 meter amateur band. What sort of things can you hear on that? Well, keep watching and I'll show you some examples. As to the type of receiver to use, I suggest a regenerative receiver. The reason? Well, you could use a direct conversion receiver, and that's good for SSB reception, but on 27 MHz you often have AM signals, and in some countries FM as well. For that, you want a proper AM receiver. And an AM receiver will also tune FM just by tuning off to one side. And the best, very simple receiver that does that is the regenerative type circuit. You adjust the regeneration so it's just short of oscillation for AM and slope detecting FM, or you have it oscillating for SSB signals. So overall, the regen receiver is probably the best I'd suggest for this converter. As for what's inside, very simple, just two transistors. One is the local oscillator using a 24 megahertz crystal. Other transistor is a RF amplifier after the mixer, and the mixer itself is just a germanium crystal diode. So very simple, doesn't even have an RF preamp, yet I'm able to receive signals over quite long distances. Here is the circuit of the converter. Right on the left is the local oscillator using a 24 MHz crystal. Change that frequency if you want to use a different intermediate frequency. Very simple, straightforward transistor circuit. You can use almost any NPN transistor and this oscillator will work. Its output is coupled through this capacitor here, 4.7 picofarad, and you've got the incoming signal coming in through here. There's the antenna socket and a tuned circuit. 
it's tapped well down the coil. In this case you've got six turns of wire. I'm just using tinned copper wire. It was actually insulated but I stripped the insulation off. Six turns, 10 millimeters in diameter, so I round it on a pen. 15 millimeters long and the tap is only about half a turn. The antenna is tapped almost down near the earth end. In parallel with that is a transistor radio tuning capacitor, 10 to 160 picofarad. If you want to, you can just put that capacitor in temporarily, then put it on a capacitor measurer, measure its capacitance and put in a fixed capacitor if you're only interested in tuning 27 megahertz. Uh, it is quite broadband. The diode here, I've got it here, a OA95, it could be a 1N34A. Basically any germanium diode that will work with a crystal set will work with this particular converter. This is the mixer stage by the way that takes the incoming signal at 27 megahertz here, mixes it with our locally generated signal at 24 megahertz, it gives you a sum and a difference, but we're only interested in the difference, which is about three megahertz. It's just a 100 micro Henry RF choke down to ground here. Because this signal is at a very low level, I've got an amplifier, a post mixer amplifier, just using a BC548 transistor. Again, any NPN small signal transistor, and that amplifies its output into the receiver and provided the receiver tunes 3 to 6 megahertz then you can be receiving signals between 27 and 30 megahertz covering the 11 and 10 meter bands. There's actually very little 6 meter activity here but if you wanted to try this converter on 6 meters there's a possibility of using this circuit if you have a receiver that covers 2 to 6 megahertz because the harmonic of 24 megahertz one of them is 48 megahertz and if you've got incoming signals at 50 to 54 megahertz then your output is 2 to 6 megahertz I wouldn't imagine the sensitivity would be very good you might need an RF preamp but that is a possibility if you've got strong 50 megahertz amateur signals in your area Here's the inside, going from right to left, the antenna connection. I should really keep leads a little bit shorter than what they are, but this seems to work pretty well as is. The variable capacitor, you tune the input, you peak on incoming signals. This is the crystal oscillator stage. You can just see the crystal here near my thumb. the input coil that resonates with the variable capacitor for the incoming signal. Hard to see but there's the diode, the mixer diode and here is the post mixer amplifier. And right here is the socket where you plug the receiver into. So very simple, doesn't take long to build, only a few hours and almost all the parts are readily obtainable. If you've got a crystal on a different frequency, then you can get away with using that, provided you compensate for it by having a different frequency receiver. But overall, I find that a tunable IF of three, four or five megahertz is quite good because your homebrew receiver will normally be fairly stable down on those frequencies and also those frequencies are most active at night often they're very quiet during the day so there's less of a chance of breakthrough if you're listening to 27 or 28 megahertz signals during the day you can be pretty sure all the signals you hear will be on 27 or 28 megahertz less likely to be breakthrough on 3 to 5 megahertz and just the three to three and a half megahertz segment coincides with a shortwave broadcast band 90 meters 
that doesn't have a lot of activity, uh, especially during the day. So, yeah, it's not as if you're going to have problems with breakthrough from strong stations in most places. And that has allowed me to get away with having a very simple design. If you did have problems with breakthrough, then you may need to have more tuned circuits, like double tuned circuits on the input, a tuned circuit on the output, maybe a tuned circuit on the output of the crystal oscillator. But I haven't needed any of that, and I've had quite good results, as you can hear in a moment. You might not think this is very sensitive without an RF preamp. However, at this location, it does receive band noise. Here's the converter off. Here's the converter on. And when I plug in the antenna, there's a similar difference. Thus, this converter both has low enough internal noise and adequate sensitivity to hear signals, even if they're just above band noise. That's VK8VF. As I'm using a 24 MHz crystal in the converter, 
4 megahertz coincides with 28 megahertz and just above 28 megahertz at 28074 is FT8 activity which if you've got the WSJTX software you'll be able to decode that even with a regenerative receiver like this. And you can really tell the band is starting to open with more stations appearing on the screen. Instead of just two or three, it's now four, five, even six. So that's our look at a super simple converter. Put one together and let me know how you go in the comments below. Why have I called this the 104 converter? Well, it converts the amateur 10 meter band starting at 28 megahertz down to 4 megahertz. And it receives 27 megahertz CB.